What's up, gamers? Who's ready for some more oops all bugs? We got a bunch of bugs on one side and a bunch of robots on the other side. Oops all bugs versus hardened scales for this first modern game of the week. Hope everyone had a good weekend. We're getting into it here with some fun stuff here. Now, we're seeing some serum powder go on. Uh, if you're not familiar with this card, anytime that you can mulligan, you can be able to just kind of tuck that serum powder or reveal serum powder and basically get another freebie mulligan going on there. So you saw it back in the day with some Eldrazi decks. There's very particular and, and specific decks that are like, yeah, this is what I want. And look, we get another one going on. On there so there you go if you know it's a mana rock no one's using it for the mana rock really you're just doing that hey if this is in your hand exile all cards from your hand draw that many cards okay so it's very cool like uh it gives you free mulligans and we're seeing even more mulligans happening when you're playing a char belcher style oops all bugs list you, you don't run lands you're running very specific cards that you can line up for. Now, if you're wanting to look at any of the deck lists, there's a link in the description to our Mox field. You can check it out. We post up all the deck lists that are featured on the channel. Sometimes we forget, though, and so spam us. Leave a comment. Let us know if there's a deck that you want to see. But the Oops All Bugs list is up there, so you guys can check that out. But it's a it's a weird one. It tries to win through a combo using Grist, but it's also just like running the New Age... Um, Gurmog Angler. That's the way I like to refer to it. This Husk Buster Swarm. We'll see if that's going to be a thing that gets utilized here. Uh, if it sh shows up, we'll do that. Now, Hardened Scales, a very quick, very aggressive artifact deck that is all about being able to maneuver your plus one counters around on different creatures, going for a pure style strategy to kill someone. You have the ability to kind of blow people out with Infect, using Ink Moth Nexus and manipulating your plus one counters and, and doing things like that. Or you could just have a big creature and just do crazy stuff. I hate fighting the deck because of how resilient it is about maneuvering counters, but it's just kind of being aware of, of where those lines are. And we'll try to, you know, point out cards to be worried about if you are end up facing this deck. All right, Zabaz is one of those, hey, this is, you know, uh, could be a potential problem. It's got the modular, but okay. We're going to start off by taking three damage and playing our Husk Buster Swarm. 6-6 six, six, Menace Death Touch. And all those cards that are in exile help us to cast this for just one black mana there. So this is what we talk about as the New Age Gurmog Angler. For those that weren't familiar, back in the day of Grixis Death Shadow, you'd fill your graveyard, Thought Scours and things like that, and Cantrips, and then, hey, now I have a 6-6, six, six, uh, you know, just creature out there but arc bounds the big one that we are most worried about that is the enabler of all of the counter shenanigans that this deck can do so and seeing all of these ursa sagas is also very scary now we're, we're kind of setting things up hardened scales is going to make this even worse for us because now things are going to start entering with additional counters and we're kind of in this like look at the lines here right we have different options depending on what is in our hand. But really, next turn is going to be the scary turn because Urza Saga is going to pop. We're going to get an additional artifact. And there's a second Arcbound Ravager. So now we at least have two creatures out that we can do some blocking on some Menace creatures. And, you know, yes, it's got Death Touch, but doesn't have Trample. So we don't have to worry so much about that side of things. So as long as we're set up okay, we're, we're building up for things. But we're actually going to go for the aggro route here. Say, okay, think we can race a little bit faster. We're going the, the lines that we need. You can see boom, 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 very quick. Sacrifice to itself. The extra counters every time off of hardened scales makes this go even scarier. And we get a big life total swing. And we say, okay, let's do a big race. All right? Can you stop me here? And dropping to seven to eight, seven to eight life, it's going to be a fast race no matter what side of the table you're on. Now, what can we do in this instant here to kind of deal with things we're going to be able to get the urza saga to go tutor for something we have a removal spell in hand that's why we had to lose three more life to be able to prepare for it but it's it doesn't help us in this case like yes your opponent could try to go all in and you could try to kill it but 
with the way things are looking, we're going to go tutor up as a Boz. They're going to Spider-Man meme each other because they're both legendary. And we'll see a huge shift in the counter like shift there. And now there's not really that opportunity to uh, just blow out one creature, right? You, you see this big uptick. Five counters on this one, six counters on this one. Here's a Shadow Spear to really kind of just hammer home uh, how much the game is in our favor. All right, we can equip this to one of our creatures and gain all the life. And then, yes, you can have a giant elemental insect swinging in for six, but we just can gain all that, no problem. Uh, yeah, and uh, they both are modular. All right, they both have the modular trigger, so whatever you kill here. Uh, it just gets moved. So let's move this here and swing in deal 11 to you. Bam. Can you hear Sophie in the background? She's trying to bring her toy upstairs. I oh, know. If you've watched the live streams and stuff like that, you guys know. We're not doing the current uh, live streams of the commentary stuff. It's all, you know, recorded at home for you all to be able to enjoy. We're doing the MTGO streams as well as RTS streams on the weekends when we can. But there's another serum powder. Let's start it off. Let's dump the hand. We don't need it. Wow, look at... Hey, remember we talked about oops, all bugs? There's a lot of haywire mites in, in here. So be, be prepared for that. I wonder if we will get to see uh, the setup here with with Gris. We got to see a lot of Gris played the last time oops, all bugs was on camera. So now we're setting things up. We'll see what, what is the case. All right, another mulligan. Looks like double ink moth nexus here for a hardened scales player. Ooh, a recross the path is in hand. Put that on the bottom. Yeah, this is the thing, right? When you have serum powder, you get like essentially free mulligans that you can still just be like, yeah, free, free. Now I'll take a regular mulligan. Okay, both players playing some some lands, getting on, enter tapped. That's that. Bridge works battle. And an immediate Husk Buster Swarm coming out. Not a turn one, but a turn two is still pretty good. When it costs eight mana and you're dropping it on turn two, it's pretty scary. Patchwork Automaton is a nice setup card. It's not not as scary as like an arc bound or things like that, but can get scary the longer the game goes on, right? You're going to be having a lot of artifacts enter and it's going to just build up. Ink Moth here. So second Hus Busker though. So now we've got a very quick clock, right? 12 damage swing could put our opponent at two next turn if we don't get a secondary creature out. So it depends on what we can be able to produce. Soul Cauldron's nice. And a walking ballista for zero. I, it's, I hate fighting against it, but I love when players do this line. It's so good to just be like, yeah, I immediately now have a creature that's a, a walking ballista. So four power creature, three counters on it, and let's immediately drop our opponent to two life. All right, so there is a Orcish Bowmaster in hand. Cannot find a way to close out yet, but we're kind of trying to set things up. But, oh, that's a pretty good one cost to find. So you know what really sucks is uh, Death Touch, dealing damage to creatures, and since you're, you know, Lovely little patchwork is a walking ballista as well. You can just go pink, pink, and I'll just ping this for one. I gain a life because of the basilisk collar as well and feel pretty good about this. Like that's a, not the position that you want to be in. Let's just make sure we can try to close things out here with this arc bound and really just try to stop your opponent. Now, swing three. Exile one of your bugs just to make it a little bit a little bit worse for wear here. Now don't forget it's it's patchwork does care about when you cast it, so that's why it didn't get an extra counter when Basilisk Collar came in, so just a little 
slight tweaks in that regard. So just paying attention. So, but I like the Basilisk collar uh, in the sideboard type thing. I, you know, or it could be main board. I don't think so. Most players are are not running them main board, but you know, players are are experimenting, doing different things. All right, so Bowmaster is is nice. We kind of deal with the uh, Arcbound, and here is the recross the paths. So if you saw our Char Belcher videos that we've had up on the channel, if you saw the Oops All Bugs before, uh, this is this is how the decks designed. We have no lands, so we're gonna cast this recross the paths. Reveal cards from the top of your library to the reveal land card. Hey, I have no lands. I'm essentially going to stack my deck. All right, and then we're going to clash. So I'm going to make sure that I put my most expensive card on top, which is the turn timber symbiosis for seven mana. Or, yeah, I guess that's the thing that helps you win the clash. You could put a huck buster, husk buster, but really it's turn timber symbiosis. And you basically are going to set it so you win the clash. All right. Because there's that whole aspect. Each clashing player reveals the top card of his or her library, then puts that card on the top or the bottom. Player wins if uh, his card is higher. So you can be able to do that, guarantee the win. You put recross path back in your hand. You put turn symbiosis on the bottom, and you're set up to go. Hey, I've stacked my deck, so I'm going to resolve a grist, and basically get to uptick and create a bunch of bugs, and then ultimate and uh, get you there. Like that's it's the way it's it's set up here. So, uh, Arn Scales player says that's fine. We'll just go to game three here. We'll, it's all we Arn Scales player won on the play, so they're like, yes, it's on. The, I'm on the draw. It's tough for me, but that's that's fine. We get some more mulligans happening. Now this oops all bugs thing is not necessarily something that you will see all the time, just like you might not always see hard scales all the time, but we like to feature as many off meta decks or other decks that m might be running around because if you play on MTGO, you can be able to find some of these decks. If you're going and playing at the RCQs, you might run into some of these decks. So it's good to feature them so you can get a better idea of what what they are, what you're fighting against. All right, more mulligans happening. Haywire Mites there, which is nice. We got to recross the path. We've got our Husk Buster Swarm. I keep wanting to say Hulk Buster. Husk Buster. All right, another mulligan. Not happy with that. So what decks have everyone been playing in Modern so far? You know, we've talked about last week. I've been really enjoying the blue side of things. So we've been seeing more of that. There's a couple new decks that we're trying to feature on MTGO that aren't blue because I'm playing a lot of blue and paper, and I'm just trying to enjoy the format and do different things. There's another serum powder. If you like gold fishing, this is the deck for you. <laughs> There's another serum powder in hand. Are we just going to... Yep. Hey, I'd like to reveal this and do another mall again. <laughs> Oh my. Yep, that's yep, that's the thing. Put these down. We're getting a real low mulligan here. Keep those four. Put these three on the bottom. Ink moth, Sabaz. So we're starting out very similar to game one. And there's a Huskbuster as well. Alright, do we have to fight an Urza saga? Okay, that's not a bad. We've got a cave coming out here. Patchwork, so not too bad. Here is another six swinging across here. Death Touch, Menace. Trying to keep our life total okay. Wow, another one. Someone foil too? That's cool. Husk Busker. All right, so we're starting to see some potential shenanigans get added in here uh, with our land so this land if you guys are not familiar with the phyrexian tower you get to sacrifice a creature get double black mana added to your mana pool and it opens you up for some shenanigans some 
some stuff that you could use to help pop and get modular triggers, but also be able to cast out things a little bit scarier. Arcbound is going to get cast. We'll put a counter on Patchwork. And now your alarm bell should be going off. You should be worried. Arc bounds hit the field. That's the thing that we are most worried about. If you're a Pithing Needle based deck, that's the thing that you should be worried about and targeting down. You could also argue with Ink Moth for, like, if you don't have a lot of ways to deal with it, that's another safe one. But Arc Bound is the, the biggest problem with the deck. Basically, on our scale, it's like Arc Bound is up there. Um, Walking Ballista, Hanger, uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron, Ink Moth. Like, there's a list of very scary, very uh, dangerous cards. But we're going to see this like, hey, I would like to do some blocking, do some absorption. Let's take some and let's flash in a Disruptor Flute here. And we're going to say, oh, you're a combo-based deck that relies on using the activated abilities of a Planeswalker. What if you can't do that? So I'm going to name Gris the Hungering Tide. So not only to cast that spell, it costs three more to cast, but now activated abilities of the source of the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. We talked about the Pithing Needle. This is just Pithing Needle, but more painful. <laughs> okay, Emperor of the Bones is a bit of a cool new one. You might have seen him if you're... Some Gorios lists are starting to run them. I've seen him in Vintage Cube. Uh, he's a cool one. He's a 2-2. Two -two. You can put uh, plus one counters on him for two mana. But the big thing is at the beginning of combat of your turn, exile up to one target creature from a graveyard. Whenever one or more plus one counters are put on Emperor Bones, you get to put a creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield with the finale counter on it. It has haste. You stack at the beginning of the end step. But Zabaz is coming out here. We're building up, right? We're setting ourselves up for more ways to block. We're at eight life, so we really have to kind of pilot this or math this out here to kill our opponent with Ink Moth Nexus or something like that. So we've already got three counters on Arcbound Ravager. We could do some blocking next turn. Essentially putting us down to two life. All right, if we block both the... If we block one of the swarms of the bugs, the Huskbuster swarm, and debating about bringing the bones... Emperor for Bones. Maybe. Yes. Sure. Okay. We're cool with it. There's the animate on the Ink Moth. So yeah, so we're setting up. We'll do a double block here and block the Bones with Ink Moth. We're going to do some shenanigans, sacrifice, and put counters on Ink Moth and try to go for the win. We are in this weird window, though, because, yeah, let's modular, move that over here. This will die. <sighs> the danger zone here is the disruptor flute. And you're, you're debating about the, if we pop this and have nothing else to put extra counters on it or do push for damage, then we're in trouble. If we just let this die, all right, we're okay. But it's like this, okay. Disruptor Flute is annoying. Yeah, so we'll sack Ravager to its own ability. We're not going to go to the Disruptor. I feel, feel like playing safe that route makes the most sense. You don't want to get just blown out by stuff. Rush Rebirth is being used here. This is a really cool card. I run this uh, in... My Golgari Commander deck, my Hapatra deck. Uh, choose start creature. When that creature dies, this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser mana value and put that onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. So you can target your opponent's creatures if they're going to die. So we can be able to find something that is a one or less mana value, which is not many in the deck, but a Haywire Might does work out. And this gives us a line to be able to 
uh, exile target non-creature artifact or enchantment, which would be the disruptor flute, allowing us the opportunity to do things in that way of we could have that set it up for for next turn or the turn after or something like that. So dropping our opponent to two though, and we can deal six damage. Oh, another arc bound. Okay, uh, but no extra. Oh, okay, very nice. So we can commit here and pop it, but that puts us. Let's see, if we sack the flute now, that puts a second counter. Uh, sack arcbound to itself is three. That puts eight counters on uh, Ink Moth. We'll attempt to get rid of the Ink Moth, but we cannot because it's not creature. So let's do to the Disruptor Flute here. Yeah, so there's two counters on it. Five counters already on Ink Moth. So you do one, two, seven, eight total. But you have no... No way to deal with the, the the crackback of the the swarm. Oh, there's the handshake. Yeah, that was tough. But you saw the lines. Like you were get we're getting built up for stuff. Like just just a little bit slower. The speed at which we could get the the swarm out. Like that was a great showing for the for both decks really. We saw the speed in game one. We saw the oops all bugs start to to build up. And go f for the uh, recross the path combo. Go for the big old elemental insects and just beat face. So yeah, it's a very, very cool deck. If you guys are interested, check out the description. So you can be able to see both deck lists if you want. But yeah, that's going to do it for us. Make sure you guys are checking out every Monday, Thursday. We have the Commentary Modern as well as on the weekend, Saturday, we are releasing MTGO stuff for you guys to enjoy. Modern, Legacy, Cube, all that kind of fun stuff. But that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching, everybody. And I'll see you all next game.